Hello and welcome to Bend the Knee, a Song of Ice and Fire podcast. I am Sir Matt, the Bud Knight. And I am Sir Ezra, the Watchful. Welcome to our Song of Ice and Fire uh, book club. It's follow-up Friday, your favorite. Uh, we answer all your ravens, and uh, we go down those rabbit holes, you know? Mm-hmm. What are we, didn't we change it up? It's not rabbit holes anymore. We're going down, uh, we're chasing cats, right? Yeah, we're chasing cats, you know? That seems yeah, to ch- be what we do. That's what, Ar- <laughs> that's what Arya's doing right now. And, uh, you know, we had some trivia about cats the other week, and we got some theories about cats, and, uh, yeah. yeah. You know I, what? Cats, know that, cats yeah. also lead us back to Lady Stoneheart, so. They do. Sometimes, they really they, sometimes do. the cats, you know, are in the canal. So, I don't know, you know, right. that's just chasing cats. Are they in the cradle? Are they in the cradle? They could be. Are the cats in the cradle? Cats in the cradle. <laughs> and the silver spoon, okay? <laughs> What's going on? I don't, I know. don't know. So... <laughs> That's all great. right well sir ezra how are you doing today oh man doing okay i'm uh i'm, I'm a little tired but uh i'm actually okay i mean I've, i get new jolt of energy looking at some of the the, the ravens we've got and uh, had some cool comments in the facebook group and you know different people I actually had a really interesting uh comment on on patreon and so yeah just i don't know feeling ready to go man so good how about you? How about you? Hey man, I'm good. Did you get that workout in? I did. I just I just got back from the gym. You know, I've been training. Um, yeah. You know, Ice and Fire Con is ever approaching us next year, and uh, just getting ready. Um, yep. You know, I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying. I just like I like like to have the arms ready, men at arms. Yeah. You know. <laughs> you never know when you never know when you run across Order the Green Hand in the streets. I you know I don't know. Hey, uh, that's true. That <laughs> is true. Know. I don't know. So hey. Lifting lay lifting tip of the day though, uh, Sir Matt will tell you that uh, the old fashioned leg press guys mm-hmm. that'll do you some good. Yeah, I like to start. With, really I, sometimes that, I like to start with leg press. You know, the biggest muscle group. You know, get yep. the, get the testosterone flowing. Yeah, get that yeah. Get the blood moving. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just had a I just had two. Uh, yeah, I just had a whey whey protein shake, and uh, I think uh, dinner is being crafted. Um, right now and it's going to be uh, some steak mm. some mushrooms onions perhaps a uh, glass of red wine so uh, yeah wow. nice nice yeah All so when right. we're done here i should uh, be able to have a little feast so <laughs> that's awesome that's yeah awesome. Save so, all right some. Save um hey we had a new trivia winner last week the trivia yeah. question last week was, what is the name of Jorah Mormont's wife? And it is Lanice Hightower, mm-hmm. if I'm saying yep. that correct. And it, the winner was Paul Wood, a new winner. So, uh, congrats. I mean, out of the woods there. Mm-hmm. Literally just, like, where did Paul come from, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Hey, well, I think the episode did release a little bit early. Uh, yeah. So, hey, that's that's good. Like we said, it's Fallout Friday. It could come out any time. Yeah, it's on Friday. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I will say um, I've been thinking a lot about trivia. Um, I have a – something. you know, Sir Ezra and I are always reassessing the show, things we should do. So I've kind of got yeah. something spinning in my head right now about trivia, and uh, I think I'm com- coming up with a cool new way to do it. Uh, so just okay. kind of stay yeah. tuned for that. I have started my rewatch. Um, just yeah. – just getting just re- starting to plow through the uh, the show a little bit so um we can we'll have our rewatch kind of ep- episodes and get that sign up going i just want to kind of plow through it once first myself that way i when i watch it a second yeah. time to get ready for the episode i'll be ready to go that's awesome yeah uh and sir matt uh, is going to be sharing his uh, HBO login and password um, <laughs> yeah. exclusively with patrons. <laughs> yeah. So you could just <laughs> yeah, hook you up. yeah, give, give you the hook, give you the hook up there. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh man, that's funny. Yeah. So. Awesome. All right. Yeah. yeah. Good. 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 Um, all right. Well, uh, we got a nice little comment here, um, sir. As I think I'll, I think I'll let you take this one. Uh, yeah, just the the one from Paula, Lady Paula. Yeah. Yeah, we kind of mentioned this last week, and, and I, you know, I, I dwelled on it, and I thought more about it, and uh, I kind of like the idea of of folks um, who are. We've been thinking about adding other other tiers, you know. Um, we've looked at other podcasts where it's like you know creating a tier in which you have sworn swords, or we've mm-hmm. got um, Kingsguard, Kingsguard, you know, Queensguard, yeah. so, all that stuff. Yeah, and kind of 
I, I really do like the way History of Westeros kind of has that those those titles, and I think it's I think it's pretty neat. So, if people were interested in joining, you know, our King's Guard or being Sworn Swords and things like that, we could make tiers uh, in which we could have those levels, and they don't have to be even. They don't even have to be more like expensive necessarily. Right. It's just sort of like. You know, you pick the reward. They could all be ten dollars. They could be eleven, twelve, right, whatever. Whatever, yeah. And yeah, nothing like super crazy. But you could kind of pick uh, the type of rewards that you want. Because some people, for example, like like uh, Lady Paula, uh, I don't know. You know, some people are like, ah, you know, the shirt, cool, whatever. Not not as interested. I want to hear those extra episodes. Mm-hmm. You know, on Patreon. Some people are kind of like, you know, I would really just like for you to go down a rabbit hole on my theory, do some research, put it at the front of the show, make it the first Raven that, mm-hmm. that you guys do, and I'm willing to, you know, you know, uh, pony out a little bit more for that. So yeah. I was, I kind of thought, you know, because we don't know, really, uh, this is all big evolution here um, at Bend the Knee, and uh, we get more new listeners every single day, and they bring in different ideas, and so uh, it, it's fantastic. I mean, literally every single day we've got new people um, hitting us up in, you know, the the Gmail or in uh, fa- the Facebook group, and it's just fantastic. So I kind of thought, you know, if you guys have ideas like that in different um, types of rewards that you'd like to see or more access to the show, let us know. I mean, you know, we can't honor mm-hmm. everything, but, you know, if it's something that's kind of neat that we could, you know, uh, create as an option, I'd love to do it. So Right. Well, you know, something I was thinking so. about, and this kind of going off, so when I was talking about trivia just a, a minute ago, something, this is just, Total idea here, Sir Ezra. I haven't even told yep. Sir Ezra this yet. No, I have no uh, idea. I was, I was just on. thinking about this while I was, you know, on the treadmill at the gym. Is, um, you know, we did that dragon egg contest, and one of the nice things about having the patron is it allows us to kind of do these contests where we can buy stuff and then ship it out to people. And yep. Um, yep. I've been kind of thinking with trivia, um, you know, maybe we did that dragon egg, uh, you know, maybe we could do something like that, same thing with trivia, and then we do like a giveaway. You know, maybe like a monthly giveaway or something um, that way, oh, okay. that way, that way it opens up to more people. All you got to do is answer the trivia question and then you're entered kind of the way we did with the dragon egg, except we had to find something uh, in the show. Right. But in this, we could just do it with trivia or something. So um, I don't gotcha. know, just just something I'm just something I'm kind of tossing around and you know just, yeah so it's just not think first come it. first serve it's it's sort of uh right because you know because sometimes sometimes yeah. i think we run into that problem with trivia and we've talked about it before um is that you know the show comes out at a set time so it kind of excludes people who get yeah, up early or, right yeah. or whatever and so i i i'm trying to find a way that everyone kind of has an opportunity um yeah. yeah, yeah, to do like that. that, and we and we've always had, we always have people express interest in that. So yeah, like I would love to do trivia, but it comes out at such a time. So that's why I'm thinking more about kind of oh, we could use some of our you know patron stuff, um, and that kind of yeah you know, helps the to, show, yeah. helps the community, which is really what it's there for, and it gives people kind of a chance at like a giveaway, which is kind of cool. So yeah, that is actually I like that a lot, honestly. Um, and and another thing, people. Are not even though we, the way the way we have it structured right now, they still send in. They like the challenge. Oh yeah, we you have know, they, people they that send them in. They're like, I know I'm late, but I just want to answer. And those yeah, are, I, I love those. Yeah, the, the, yeah, we get yeah. those. We get those people like, I know I'm late, I just want to answer. Yeah, great. Yeah, because it's just it's fun to kind of do a little bit of um, you know uh, trivia. So yeah, yeah, cool. So uh, all right, so um, I'll just do it. Go ahead and do trivia for this. Week, uh, in what year was Tyrion Lannister born? Uh, in what yeah. year was Tyrion Lannister born? That's probably going to require a little bit of research, but uh, but I think we actually covered this a couple weeks ago. I think we did. I, I, we were, I we, we did, were talking yeah. about that timeline, um, for the, for the Mad King and whether or not, you know, Tyrion could be, uh, you know, his related to, etc. And so, mm-hmm. If you were listening to that Maester study, it's actually the answer's there. But yeah, mm-hmm. if you need to just go look, just go look it up too. But I mean, yeah, it's definitely been talked about recently. So. Yeah, and uh, one other little piece of news I think uh, we'd like to share is that um, yep. our Hedge Knight Black Council, first part of the Duncan Egg series, um, has been yeah. recorded. Um, you know, we always yep. we record the show early, so we don't know exactly you know if. It'll be up by then, but it has been recorded, and uh, you know we'll we'll be getting to that, getting that to you guys. Uh, I'd say it's up. I, I okay. we'll, we'll say it's up. We'll okay. be ambitious. I think and, I actually yeah. have to still <laughs> upload my audio first, so I'll make sure just, to get hey, that tonight. Just make sure so, that we, yeah. yeah, that we get it done. <laughs> yeah. So right now it's on uh, Sir Matt, Sir Matt to uh, share, share, you know, pay the taxes, you know, make sure that they 
to get into the, uh, yeah. the iron bank known as our Dropbox. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had to quit. We had to quit, quit using Google Drive because it was too annoying. It's bad. Sorry. It's a piece of junk. It is a piece of junk. I mean, it's, sorry, Google. I mean, for some, it works for everything else. For some reason, big audio files, it just doesn't. Yeah. Uh, doesn't work so we switched to Dropbox, and it seems to be working quite well so yeah yep um all right well let's, we can go ahead and uh dive in here to uh some ravens i'll read this one i actually responded here yeah. um hey guys i meant to send this email a few weeks ago i just wanted to let you know that i still love your podcast and listen regularly but i had to cancel support on patreon because i'm in grad school living off student loans and have no income at the moment so i'm just not able to use that money for anything but necessities keep doing what you're doing best lady lauren yeah we hadn't heard from lady lauren in a while and um i remember she had she had sent us a message uh, a while back saying like uh because she answered, i think she did trivia and um, she was like, I know I'm like really late on this, but I just moved across the country yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. So I think we, we you and I were talking because you and Sir Ezra and I, uh, we do. We talk about all of our listeners. Uh, oh, gosh, all the time. I was like, yeah. Yeah, have we heard from that person? Well, yeah, I don't know. I haven't I'll seen him in the group. I'll tell you or, right now, it, it was almost um, like a Liana Stark situation. I have called every banner we had to go yeah, find I, Lady Lauren. Yeah, I was and like, Lady Lauren was what on we were second. talking about. Like, I haven't heard. Yeah, I just we haven't heard from her in a while. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I messaged her back, and I told her to, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> Sir Ezra's there right now, going back to school, you know, pension, penny, yeah, penny no pension, kidding. you know. That's right, no but, kidding. You know, crazy. trying to find yourself a new keep. And That's right. <laughs> you got a penny pinch, man. Those down payments, every penny helps. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, we've all been there before. But I sent her a message and I told her to keep an eye out for the Sphinx while she's spending time at the Citadel because I've heard that the Sphinx yeah. is the riddle. Yep. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. That's so cool. Well, yeah, we wish her the best of luck there. Yeah, best so, of luck. Good luck. Hit us up school. whenever you can. You know, mm -hmm. Lady Lauren, uh, appreciate it. So, uh, uh, okay, we actually have another uh, Raven that's similar in just that it's. Uh, from someone new, we have Lady Cassandra, mm -hmm. and uh, this actually, I'll just kind of start start reading here. It's a little, it's interesting. I, I like it. It's more of a, it's it's less uh, more about how she got into the podcast and sort mm -hmm. of a, we're yeah. welcome, we're going to welcome her to the realm, uh, essentially, officially. here. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, she says, hello there. Let me start off by saying thank you for all you do. The realm appreciates it. So I recently finished up with Game of Thrones, with a, with a Game of Thrones podcast uh, that was for the show that had done coverage uh, back in the past season. I listen to podcasts at work a lot. I have a desk job in the back, um, so she's able to listen there. I was itching for some fresh commentary and checked back at my iTunes subscriptions to see what else I had available. At the very top, since it's alphabetically ordered, uh, was this podcast called Bend the Knee that I could not recall downloading. I was super perplexed and looked back through the episodes to see why I hadn't been listening to this before and discovered Second Breakfast yeah. buried within. <laughs> I, was, uh, I had subscribed to your podcast at the end of last year due to Sir Ezra's friends on Swish and Flick. Shout out to Squibs. Um, I had listened to a few episodes, but it soon got lost amongst the others I was listening to. I do apologize. So basically, I then listened to your first Bend the Knee episode on August 20th, and I am still caught up. I'm still not caught up. I listen to between 5 to 10 of your episodes each week, both main and follow-up Friday. There's just so much content. It kills me not to be able to participate in your trivia and Dragon Egg contest, but I vow to not skip ahead. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's some dedication right there, Lady Cassandra. That's awesome. Uh, I just finished episode 24, which was uploaded in early August, so I still have about two months to go. My discovery of your podcast could not have come at a better time since I uh, started reading the series just three weeks before finding you. Uh, I can't get enough of the discussion and theories. I started watching Game of Thrones in my last semester at college four years ago. Forgot homework and graduation, or forget homework and graduation preparations. I had some excellent TV to catch up on. Uh, of course, just like many of the fans, I fell in love straight away. I wanted to read the books, but was never able to get around to it. Even now, it is taking me longer than I'd like to accomplish the daunting task because every other interest and obligation in my life. In addition to my day job uh, and working one night a week at my parents' pizza place, my time is eaten uh, up by crocheting, cro crocheting, knitting, and other crafts, planning my wedding, and looking for a house. 
um, watching other great TV shows, movies, playing Lego, Harry Potter, sorry, I'm behind uh, the times, decorating the pizza shop for Halloween, and spending time with my five nephews. With all that said, please let me properly introduce myself. Greetings, good sirs. My name is Lady Cassandra of House Zona. I think it's Zona, Mm -hmm. I think. Um, I live in a small town, in the small town of Bloomfield on the east coast of Westeros. (laughs) That's awesome. Uh, almost exactly equal distance between the God's Eye and Dragonstone. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, House Zana is very small, but uh, extremely loyal to the Targaryens. Holy smokes. Um, my family uh, acquired its lordship a couple hundred years ago when one of the ancestors saved several of the Targaryen family members from drowning in the sea between the coast and... And uh, Dragonstone. Holy smoke! That's a bag. This is this is cool. some serious dedication. This reminds here. me of like, this reminds me of Lord Adam Parker's, uh-huh. you know, yeah. uh, kind of, you know. Uh, let's see. We will never betray our rightful kings and queens, and quietly await the day of their return. We are often forgotten by the rest of Westeros, which is fine since we like to do our own thing. My family is unique in that we trace our lineage through the female. Um, line since this is the only way to prove uh, the child uh, pr- to prove the child is one of the uh, uh, was one of the Zoana family blood both our lord and lady govern the town with equal power depending on several uh, depending on some individual personalities in the words of how Zoana of, I think I'm saying that right Zana, Zana? Mm-hmm. yeah okay in the words of how Zana um, man maketh the city but woman Maketh the man. Nice. That's cool. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Uh, yeah, and uh, then the, we get the free pizza. That's pretty great. Too. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. Sorry this was so long. If you could at least uh, give me a shout-out when you get this, uh, that would be, that so would so be really so cool. Yeah, so, so uh, if you're ever traveling south of uh, Rochester, New York, stop in for some free pizza. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll so, be there. I mean... I think Lord Adam Parker also lives in around the. I think he lives in the New York. Uh, I think it's time for a New York meetup. I think it is too. Hey, we can go to New York. I'm down. I mean, I've been there. Sir Matt went west. It's time for him to come back east. It's true. I'll go to New York. He just got out there, but you know, yeah, whatever. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm down. Hey, always down for some free pizza. So, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, uh, thank you, Lady Cassandra. We, we really appreciate it. Yeah, really. Pre- I always, you. I always love when people put in some serious dedication in their origin stories. Yeah, if we butchered that house name, let us know. Sorry, that's what we yeah, do. We probably did. That's we what we. That's what we do. Yeah, okay. we're hedge knights. Mm-hmm. Come on, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, okay, um, we have one here. Um, Greetings, sirs. I have listened to your podcast for a while now and have a question and two things I noticed. Blood Raven and Maester Aemon both traveled to the Wall. One has a thousand eyes and one, and the other is blind. One stayed on the wall and lost his sights, while the other went beyond the wall and saw everything. I just liked the contrast between the two. Um, and then he, I believe this is his question, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. King's blood does nothing. All the blood magic performed by the Red Woman is done with Targaryen lineages. But does this uh, mean restriction or resurrection, resurrection is done? Excuse me. Yeah, resurrection is done without uh, magic blood. Because uh, Lord Dendarian is no descendant, right? Greetings from the Netherlands, Hodor, the champions of the fighting pits. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Um, oh, yeah. So first of all, let's talk about the Maester Aemon Blood Raven thing. That is actually a uh, interesting kind of comparison, right? Is that both those Targaryens go up there, and that is kind of the the differences that happens between them. And yeah, and oh man, in 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 Gur fashion, I I don't know how it's all, you know, go, going to work out. But um, every time Maester Aemon speaks and talks about something, I think you need to go. I think we need to go back and look at all the different times where he was talking to John and and mm-hmm. sharing information and, and and guidance. Like, although he's the one who's you know blind and stays there and is a part of this, you know, uh, order of Maesters that seems mm-hmm. like they're they're they're. Um, Oh gosh, single-minded or close-minded uh, to the ways of magic and stuff. Maester Eamon seems to have this uh, spark inside of him that that is a lot like Marwyn the Mage. Mm-hmm. You know, like like uh, it in that he believes in some of those um, higher mysteries. 
Right. Well, you know? I, I wonder, I wonder, um, and we don't know because we haven't run into many of them, but if that is something that we see from maesters that are at the wall, um, because, you know, like remember, you know, the maesters in the South seem to kind of dismiss, right? Like in the show, right? Um, you know, when Sam is telling them about, you know, like they just kind of dismiss the idea of like white walkers and all that kind of stuff. Whereas the maesters at the wall are the ones that kind of know it. And then they're also like, okay all about it like they're like uh yeah, yeah. there's definitely some truth because we see it we see it up here and then you have right. um uh kyburn who is all you know another mm-hmm. maester who seems like he's you know he gets kind of viewed as like in the dark arts um right so yeah i mean it, I, yeah. I wonder if it's more is just is is kind of less of the order of maesters and more of the what the city like the citadel and just kind of like that, the old town, and, and maybe the way that town kind of thinks. Yeah, that that honestly could be because they often uh, kind of talk about. I think it's Mar. I think it's Mar- Marwin um, who talks about the idea that that uh, Mister Eamon should be almost considered like like the high, like like back at the Citadel. Um, oh gosh, like like what's his name? The, the highest maester, whatever. Can't think of it right now, the title. Um, but it's because he's been stuck out there at the wall. They almost think he's, um, you know, changed or jaded. And also they were worried about the, Tar- the, the Targaryen piece, you know. Mm-hmm. They wanted everyone to forget him out there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that the proximity, depending on where you go, I mean, if you're, if you're over with, um, you know, I don't want to say the Iron, Ironborn. Do the Ironborn have a maester? They have a maester, don't they? They, I'm pretty sure they do. Uh, yeah, I think they do. Yeah. But uh, so, anyways, if you're over there and you and you hear legends or you hear different rumors about a drown god and stuff, and you see bits and pieces of evidence, and you see a whole culture of people uh, worshiping this thing, there's th- that came from somewhere. You know what I mean? So right. that probably does influence you. Just once they leave, it's really those that are back at the citadel that are kind of like shocking to us in the show, uh, and um, well, e- e- even even Maester Lewin, you know, uh, at at uh, Winterfell is 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 a skeptic, you know. Right. And so, and he's closer to the wall. I, I don't know. I I think the wall's kind of this its own exception in that, like they like the, there's definitely something going on. If magic has retreated and if these um these mysterious creatures have kind of left the Seven Kingdoms, they've gone to places like the Far East and they've gone to places to like the, like the Far North. And so, um, if you're not near where that uh, mystery is is at it's kind of hard for you to wrap your mind around right uh those those legends being alive and walking around you know so right well i mean well think about this too is even um you, you see kind of you know, like ned stark is and and you know and catlin when they're having that conversation about like well dire wolves haven't even been beyond the wall in over like 200 years you know and how far you know think about how much how far south Winterfell is from the wall. It's not that far. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I yep. think uh, yeah, I think you're right in that the, that the wall definitely has something. Um, whether there's a bigger connection between Blood Raven and Maester Aemon, I do. I think there is something there. Um, yep. And I think we'll we'll get it if we ever get more of the Dunkin' Egg books or perhaps perhaps Fire and Blood Part 2, which would cover that. Um, Because I definitely think there's a story there, whether it's this big revelation about White Walkers or the others or something like that, or I don't know. But I definitely that's just a scene I would love to see is is, you know, what, um, you know, the that converse, the conversations between Maester Aemon and Blood Raven. Yeah, for sure. Um, Because Blood Blood Raven is also a character, you know, he's the Blood Raven we see in. um you know when he beca- when he's the three eyed crow is totally different than the blood raven you see in the mystery night um like he's a he's I mean, he just you know he's very he seems very kind of mysterious when you actually get to hear him talk in the mystery night um you know and he's 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 kind of he has this mysticism around him is like kind of the way that he's kind of described mhm yeah Wait, who? Uh, Mace, Blood Raven. Mace Raymond? No, Blood Raven. Oh, Blood Raven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, when he when it. he's talking when he's talking to Duncan Egg about like what he should do with them and. Oh yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, anytime we kind of bring up one of these characters, I like to kind of just 
look and give some background information for folks. And I mm-hmm. always find something. It's amazing when I when I come to the the wiki or any of the forums, and you just you find more stuff. So, um, you know, we know that he's the third son of of Magar Targaryen. Um, so he's Egg's um, older brother, isn't he? Aemon, yeah. Aemon is, yeah. Yeah. But but he's Aemon is Egg's older brother, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so so King King Makar the first there. Uh, his wife is actually Diana Dane. So that is Makar's wife. Um, so in just looking at who his mother would be, he's related to the Danes, which I thought yeah. was really kind of cool. You know. Uh, so there's. There's that, and you just gonna. I was looking over some of those other connections, like who might he uh, be, either related to or interested in, etc. So yeah, I don't know. He's he's a cool character. There's a lot of neat stuff. Like John is still pondering, you know, um, Eamon's advice, which is you know, kill the boy and let the man be born. Right. He's that's still, like he's that's like that's of, playing throughout his inner monologue. The you know the in um, yeah, Dance of Dragons. Right. Right, so he's he's still trying to figure that out. So, um, yeah, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, he uh, he dies uh, of of a chill at the age of a hundred and two, mm-hmm. which is crazy, right? So, but you know what? Hold on a second. Hold on, you know, you, hold on a second. I mean, people are getting raised left and right. You know, it's true. And he would have king's blood. So. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if Lady Stoneheart can come back, I mean, it's possible. you know, bring this guy back. I'm, I'm just, I'm, uh, that's, that's a, I mean, that is a, that's not that's even a rabbit hole. I don't even know what that is. But uh, I, I just kind of thought of it because I, I, there's all these images of him on, on the wiki standing out on the ship, you know, um, with Sam, uh, talking to Sam kind of, you know, just about things, things to come, mm-hmm. you know, while he's there aboard. Um, I think he's on the Cinnamon Wind, I think. Yep. So, yeah. But so, anyways, I mean, because yeah. his body, is, it says that his body is stored, you know, yeah. um, on think, the cinnamon wind. Right. And remember is that he, um, you know, he would be cremated. He wouldn't be buried. Well, unless they kind of, once you join the Night's Watch, you kind of get rid of that. Because, you know, there's been long tradition that the, the Targaryens would be cremated. Yeah, I just, I, I need to go back and look and see what they did with his body. Did Sam actually take it all the way I to the Citadel? I think he does. Or I is think, it stored? I think it is stored. You know? I think he might even. I think Sam might even pay pay someone to take it back to the Citadel. So I don't know. I just thought that's in you know something I never thought about. You know, Maester Eamon being raised again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, anyways, okay, all right. I think we're good there. Uh, let's okay. see on to um, and he had a se- the second point there was all of the blood magic performed by the Red Woman is done with Targaryen lineages. Uh, but does this mean resurrection is done without magic blood? Because Lord Dondarrion is no descendant, right? Yeah, that is interesting. Is um, and th- it's Thoros of Mir who is you know a red priest, I guess. Um, you know, mm-hmm. a- and uh, he raises Lord Dondarrion, and Catelyn Stark is also raised. Um, and we know that she, we assume, doesn't have any sort of any sort of magic blood. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I think that she can uh, the king's blood and the lord of light choosing to raise people seem to be different different things. I'm not entirely sure how it works. Uh yeah, well, uh the whole bit with 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 king's blood. I th- again, this, we have to take Melisandre, uh, Melisandre at her word, right? I mean, that's what she's that's what, right. that's what she's saying has power. Mm-hmm. Um but really, if that's the case, then, you know, the, I mean, who, what's a king? You know, who's a king? Uh, from, from where? Does, right, does, because does, it matter, right? does Mance Raider yeah. have king's blood? Does. I mean, yeah, yeah, you had, you had nine penny kings at one point. You, you mm-hmm. remember that? We've got the nine penny kings. You know, we've got um, the War of the Five Kings, you know? So it's like all of them and their descendants have magical properties i think you're i think it is more of those uh stark and maybe targaryen bloodlines maybe there's something special about those you know i don't know kind of tough because it's just just the idea that you're that you're 
king, you know, and that you win the crown all the, you know, for a day or two, all of a sudden your your blood turns to magical. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's right. Yeah, I actually okay. So I actually found uh, something here. I, I want to read here. This is uh, from somebody simply called Hedge Knight on the A Song of Ice and Fire wiki. <laughs> um, Good. Say or the uh, forum, the Song of Ice and Fire forum here. Um, let me see here. Just to, what exactly is the power in King's blood? Burning King's blood creates magic. This is, he has he has five, uh, four points here, um, or she does. Excuse me. This is yep. what Mel believes. This is not what I believe. Just about every Targaryen king in the last three hundred years were burned. Arian burned himself to death. That's Arian Bright Flame. Um, right. As we know, not a single time did it create a miracle. That's three hundred years of burning King's blood, and nothing of note took place other than. Uh, make a lot of smoke. Evidence does not support this theory. Someone with king's blood can perform miracles if they know the right spells and rituals. Aegon V, Egg, um, had all the ingredients. He had a large fire. He even sacrificed himself, um, meaning that potentially, you know, we don't know exactly what happens at the tragedy at Summerhall, but, um, and many other with king's blood. Rhaegar was born close to this time. Summerhall went down, but was he conceived nine months before? before is that but he was conceived nine months before is that a miracle it sounds rather weak to me very underwhelming and not worth the trouble considering the baby would have come out anyway daenerys had all the ingredients and the stone eggs hatched into dragons we know for sure that daenerys has king's blood and she performed the funeral ceremony so there is kind of some support for that yeah um they, they go they go on on some other things here uh they actually even reference order the green hand so i'm just gonna skip over that and uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> just messing. and um he said the red Good. and talk about the red comet maybe they're with the red comet uh is something else that so yeah there's a lot of magical pieces and unfortunately we still don't know you know exactly what they you know where where they where they play, which is actually still I think actually kind of the cool thing about the fact that Winds of Winter hasn't come out because you know we're close to the end, so we can we're at this kind of sweet spot where we can make some really kind of great predictions and um, you know we don't know exactly how everything's going to go, but I kind of am in the belief that it's more power through the gods. I don't think that it has to be kind of specific rituals um, because it seems like in the world of ice and fire we talked about how on skagos they're still doing human sacrifices through the weirwoods but i don't know that the weirwoods still need that maybe that's just something that they did mm-hmm. back in the day i don't know right well and you know it's it's also it really is it, it's it's a broader uh thing here i think it's just blood magic right you know like like oftentimes we say king's blood or or you know blood of the targaryens or whatever I think on the, these people are just more their practice in king's blood. Sometimes I think mm-hmm. I'm sorry, uh, in, in blood magic and the idea that you want to use a king's blood or someone. I think that's just you deciding like I want that person to die right. for some other reason. You know what I'm saying? Like let's pick this person because they're a nuisance. Like for example, Melisandre, uh, one of the people she sacrifices is um, uh, he's, he's a Florent. He's Lord Florent. Uh, um, Alistair Florent, I think, mm-hmm. and it's to gain. She does that to kind of gain favor, uh, favorable winds on the vo- on the voyage north as they head to the wall. And part of that was, uh, you know, just I, I think it was uh, as, to get him out of the way too. You know, it was sort of like he was someone who she didn't want, uh, you know, bothering or, or or speaking out against her anymore. So, yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, th- well th- we. The only, uh, I think, the the power in the blood, right? The, that that kind of that kind of a thing. Like we know that, yeah. Um, there's definitely power through the like Valyrian kind of bloodline um, that that results in being able to tame slash ride dragons, and then also the that power. I'm gonna we presume in kind of the Stark bloodline with the wolves. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, good, uh, good Raven there. Um, Okay, I'm going to skip over here to uh, Brown Ben Zaza is back once again saying Sophie Turner has said that at the end of season eight slash the series, fans will be divided. I strongly 
believe that Danny will die. Could be from childbirth, which is kind of cliche, but I think she dies in the most tragic way possible, and it is Jon Snow killing her to create light. Lightbringer, I will lose my shit if this is <laughs> uh, if that <laughs> happens. Uh, this is show specific, by the way. I would love to hear your all y'all's opinions on whether John slash Danny or both survive. Yeah, this is something we you know we've talked about um, every now and then. And honestly, every time the more I read the the series, the more I rewatch the show, I go back and forth all the time on it. Hmm. Yeah, this is fun to speculate on. It is. It's so a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to speculate on. Yeah. Uh, what do you think in there, Sir Matt? What do you think? Um, I think right now where I'm leaning is that I do like the idea of John uh, killing Daenerys to create Lightbringer. Um, I think that would be like that would be cool. I think that that would be, and then perhaps John also dies in the battle, and then you know the throne goes to someone like Renly or or not Renly. Um, the like oh god gendry um gendry okay. yeah so yeah. i i think that the where i'm at is one of two things is going to happen i think that i mean this could be in the books too kind of um i think that the azora high character will be someone not like in the main kind of three you know like it's not going to be danny or john or somebody it's going to be somebody like jamie or the hound um and then, like, one of the big characters sits the Iron Throne at the end, or vice versa. Like, a minor kind of, I don't want to say minor character. Like, Sansa isn't a minor character. But um, just not somebody that's, like, obvious. Like, John, Daenerys, or Tyrion. Like, who I kind of consider the big three. Um, yeah. Right. So, I think, like, one of them sits the Iron Throne, and then, like, John is Azor High Lightbringer. I think that it's going to be one of those things. I don't, I do not see, like, Jon Snow having um lightbringer and sitting the iron throne when it's all said and done or daenerys either vice versa so 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 neither of them are sitting on the, on the iron throne well and, i think it's possible that one of them does i'm what i'm saying what i'm saying, what but, I'm saying yeah. but if that's the case then i do not think john is also azora high gotcha i i don't so i don't i don't think azora. that john, right yeah. i think it's going to be if john sits the iron throne then azora high is going to be like jamie Right. I don't I don't think that John is going to be both. OK, gotcha. That makes sense. Hmm. OK. Um. Yeah. So. So let's see. Was that Brown Ben uh, mm-hmm. was saying that uh, strongly believes that John is going to plunge that sword into Danny's heart. Mm-hmm. That is I mean, I mean, in keeping with fashion with the things that we've seen in game of thrones like yeah that actually fits i mean it actually is something that totally totally fits and will and 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 can totally work Mm -hmm. um do i think that's gonna happen gosh i don't know you know it's almost like it's so weird to think that you want to have like a a nice happy uh resolute ending to this because like that's what we think some that's me at least myself i read a lot of high fantasy stuff and you're always Mm -hmm. like ah cool good guy wins at the end and we're all good and we're all safe and stuff. But like, that is not how this is going to end. Right. You know, it is not going to end in that, that happy, um, you know, with a bow on top type of, uh, Oh no, I don't, I don't think that at all. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's sort of like, could I see that happening? Absolutely. I could see that happening. So I'm not going to shoot that down. Um, do I think that he's going to kill Danny or John? Wow. That's a hot, that's because he's already killed John. You know, yes, and he has. definitely, he definitely, yeah. Has, yeah, he has a lot of, you know, um, he's bringing people, he's raising people, you know, up again from, from, from the grave. So, I mean, you can only do that so many times, right? Right. Um, you know, apparently, apparently with, with Barrick at seven, you know, yeah. so whatever. But, um, and that can't be a thing, by the way. I gotta, I gotta talk more about that later. Cause like the seven, it's R'hllor. I, I got beef with that, but it is, okay. uh, that I think. Yeah, I, I just I I think Danny lives, I really do, mm-hmm. and I know, I like that. So I know that kind of um, I I don't know why, but I just sort of have this feeling that like yeah, something's going to happen to her. Maybe she doesn't sit the Iron Throne. I I don't know. Like, uh, but uh, and that's if the Iron Throne okay. that's if the Iron Throne exists. 
True. Right. Yeah, it could go I back think to a Seven Kingdoms. Situation. It could. I think that is kind of a li- more likely. Yeah. Yeah. That that, it, that, that the Iron be. Throne no longer exists at, at, at the end, and it does go back to like a Seven Kingdoms kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know the other the situation where where in which I could see Danny dying, because I kind of think you need the Targaryen line to continue. You know, mm-hmm. and you need um, you know, so you need her to have a child with whoever. Uh, whether it's in the show John or if it's um, you know this this Aegon you know coming from Illyrio and 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 what have you with John Connington, uh, then then there's that. But I don't know. I just I kind of feel like you need that that bl- that family to continue. Mm-hmm. And so I'm thinking to myself, how do you do that? How right. do you how, like, you know like, as, as a some, writer, Gur's not going to kill right, off right. You know, some, I was I was thinking about something. The I was thinking about something the other day, Sir Ezra. Yeah. Um, you know, I was thinking about these titles we give people, right? And Daenerys yeah. is the mother of dragons, right? Mm-hmm. Could it be that she is pregnant with, say, triplets, which kind of goes back to that three heads of the dragon thing? <laughs> and it yeah. would be kind of bringing back the Targaryen line. Like you're really you're re, you're bringing back the strong Targaryen line, and she has three kids. Yeah. Yep, I I honestly think that yeah, there, there's going to be some type of return, like 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 I, yeah. with the Targaryen family. I don't know who the male in the situation is. I don't know if it's John. I don't know if it's someone else. But uh, right. that's why I feel like there's got to be some secret that that's been laid out there that we just really, you know, don't know. I mean, maybe it is John. You mm-hmm. know, but. Uh, I just, I, I, I don't know. I just feel feel like she either has to either have a child or have those children and then die, or she's going to not die at all. Mm-hmm. And at the end, we're going to see her with the with the possibility of, you know, sitting the Iron Throne and then possibly you know marrying someone else once all of this has been resolved. It could, it's probably it, it, like I, I kind of like what you said. If she sits the Iron Throne, then Jon Snow is Azor Ahai and saved the the Seven Kingdoms, and she gets to sit there, and that was her former love and then she has right. to marry and have kids and do her right you know duty uh keep the family line going type of thing i don't know so but again uh she's a targaryen I mean, she she's can she keep that family name going too you know what i mean how do you keep the family like the targaryen name going i mean i, I get that right. it's just a tradition that basically you know um that they end up taking the other person's name but i you know i don't know so I'm confused, man. I'm baffled. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know which 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 way to go on that. It's something I rested. I you know, it's the first thing I think about when I wake up in the morning. And it's the last <laughs> thing I think about before I go to sleep. You know, That's it's true. It, will Danny sit on the Iron Throne? So so okay, um, great Raven. Um, all right. So this is some stuff. I just we we started doing this. We started pulling stuff from the group just because we kind of want to. You know, everyone's talking about stuff, and sometimes throughout the week we just we just don't get a chance to uh, you know to to talk about it. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, great question here from Irene Montana. Out of the characters who so far do not have a POV chapter, which do you hope to see in Winds of Winter? She says she wants the Hound. Hmm. So a character that has not had a POV chapter but would get one in Winds of Winter. Uh, so she wants the Hound, right? So That's kind of where I'm at. That- uh, so, yeah, and so, I mean, that's kind of what we get. Like in the show, we get that when he's at the village, right, with right. those uh, villagers and things. You get that he's he's there off on his own. He is the main character that we know. So I actually kind of think we might really get that. Mm-hmm. You know, that actually could be a, a genuine thing that we get. Mm-hmm. A character who we don't have. Mm, that's tough. You know, a character a, a character that I think would be great, um, and it is a, it is a character that it, in the show isn't really like a P, uh, POV. I mean, character. I mean, uh, is Braun. Um, okay. I think I think Braun would be a really interesting POV character, um, especially since I don't really know what's going to happen with him in the show. I kind of see him as somebody they can kind of kill off. Um, right. But I think that he, you know, like he kind of gets Bronze a really interesting character because he kind of gets like promoted up and up throughout the throughout the 
about the series, and he, I think he, there's a lot we could learn from him in, in a POV. Yeah, yeah, there is actually. Well, and, and, and as he gets promoted, he's sort of like less and less willing to take those risks, and he's kind of like, I'm good, you know. Mm-hmm. It's actually there's a really good kind of theme there, and that like the more you have, the more you gain, um, the more you have to lose, you know. Mm-hmm. Before he's just a sell sword, willing to, you know, draw by count. Co- Draw by combat, sure, cool. I'm working my way up, yeah, but now, like you know, as the show goes on, and then even in the in, in the book series, it's like there's less incentive for him to to help out, mm-hmm. you know, Tyrion when he's in, uh, you know, for his trial of combat. So I, uh, yeah, uh, a character that I think is likely is uh, Marjorie Tyrell. I think that I think mm-hmm. that is a very likely uh, thing, especially I think it would be super cool if she had a POV and it does go down the same way it goes down in the in the in the show where they blow up the Sept of Baylor when she's in there. I think that would be a very like interesting and a very Gur type of death. Like to see it from, yeah. to see it from her perspective would be pretty cool. Now, I've not read all of the Winds of Winter, like, like released chapters. Mm-hmm. They're not, like, from the... Be- are they from the beginning, like, going in order? We don't know. Do we know? Don't know. I, okay, I know they've been, you know, released, and that's my fault, guys, for not having gone, and I've just held off. I've I've held right. off this long that I'm sort of like, I, I'm going to try not to, to read them, you know? Uh, there's some good stuff from the Dornish there uh, mm-hmm. that I've seen chapter titles, and I've seen people have even sent us Ravens where I've stumbled onto it. I'm like, oh, gosh, there it is. But I wondered if the in 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 the prologue, who are you going to have in the prologue? Because the prologues are very interesting. In the Game of Thrones, you've got Will, uh, the Ranger, right? Chapter mm-hmm. one. In uh, Clash of Kings, you've got Cressen, the the Maester at uh, um, Storm's End, you know, or mm-hmm. Dragonstone uh, with Stannis Baratheon. Uh, let's see who else you've got here. Storm, uh, a Storm of Swords. You've got uh, Merritt Frey, the ninth son of Lord Walter Frey. That's mm-hmm. interesting. That's in the epilogue, actually. The prologue would be um, uh, Chet the Steward, you know, of the Night's Watch. So it's just weird. You get like that that point of view um, in those prologue chapters. You get uh, Pate, a novice in the Citadel. Uh, you got him there. Mm-hmm. I see Dance of Dragons. You've got oh Veramir. Yeah, who can forget Veramir? Uh, a mm-hmm. skin changer, right? Mm-hmm. That's a pretty big um, point of view there, where we learn a lot about. Skin changing and the, and the sins and things that you know the the do's and don't do's right. Mm-hmm. So, really, um, yeah, you could throw in a minor character or even a brand new character. Seems like what he does there is he he tosses in a character we've never met before, right? And we'll never probably meet again, you know, necessarily. Or if we do, it's sort of like a I take the back. Like Maester Crescent's a you know we, we right. see him in a couple of chapters and so on, but it's sort of like you know um, a smaller character. So mm-hmm. for me, I mean, there's just no way it's going to happen. But I mean, I want to see, you know, old Beric Dondarrion, you know, uh, you know, chapter starts off and it's just sort of like he's his eyes are, you know, coming open and and uh, Rulor's just brought him back again just for the heck of it. Yeah. You know, that's what I want to see. So <laughs> but so. I really don't know. I, I this is that's that's hard. I'd have to go look um look up a few more characters and kind of see because you've got situations like where you've got Asha Greyjoy's got, you know, uh, a point of view chapter in, in a feast of crows. Um, the captain of the guard there for, for Duran Martell. Mm-hmm. Um, what's his name? Ario Hota. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's like the, he has this one point of view chapter where he's watching well, like, the children. Well, like John, John the, Connington, you know, you know kind of has. Right. Right. Yep. There you go. So I don't know. It's kind of neat. If you want to look at uh, the different point, just type in point of view characters in the in the wiki, and you can kind of see, you know, Eddard Stark has, you know, what's it say, 15 chapters. Uh, right. Catelyn's got 11. Daenerys well, and, and like, cool. it gets kind of weird at, in in the last two books where you start to get, um, like, it's like Captain of the Guard chapter and stuff like that. And then you have, like, Cat of the Canals, which is actually an Arya chapter. Um, it's where she's, mm-hmm. like, a faceless, you know, faceless man. So yeah, she's, she's training. Someone, yep. Yeah, she's playing someone else, but it's tech, it's actually an Arya chapter. So, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, or maybe a Serial Frail chapter. I'd be down with that too. Wouldn't that be a shocker? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like Serial, fr- like Serial, c- like what? That <laughs> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, who? That'd be crazy. That'd be nuts. That'd man. be nuts. Uh, Everyone would lose their mind. Here's a co- like. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! Here's actually a cool one to do. If you're looking for like a shorter kind of like 
just jumping around. Um, look at someone like Victorian Greyjoy, mm-hmm. who has like two chapters in A Feast of Crows. And again, as as Sir Matt has mentioned, you've got he may be in other chapters, but he has his own point of view chapter that you can basically go check out. You know, and and, and look at Aaron Greyjoy mm-hmm. also has another one. The Greyjoys are kind of a big deal in in A Feast for Crows. Um, get a lot more, you know, intel on them. So there's just two chapters you can go read, knock out Victorian Greyjoy in that one, and he's got two more in A Dance of Dragons, and you're done. You've read his whole, you know, point of view for the series. Four mm-hmm. chapters, and you're done. So that's kind of cool, actually. And w- you'd be surprised. When I did my brand re- my, my brand um, study, you know, he only has like three chapters in one book, four in another. Not a whole lot, actually. So that's one he's keeping kind of like... Uh, shrouded in some mystery, we don't we don't get a whole lot. So when we do, it's it's super impactful. So yeah, there's that. So uh, okay, All right. uh, qu- uh, what's something here from uh, Zachar McAllister? Pronouncing that right? Mm-hmm. Um, anyone else think Renly Baratheon would have actually made a pretty good king? I'm thinking more of the book Renly than the show Renly. I actually do think Renly would have made a pretty good king. Um, I do think yeah. he is like pretty dumb in his claim to try and do it. I mean, although he does amass a pretty large army, um, I think just because people really like him. But uh, the way I view it is, he has no legitimate claim whatsoever, since Stannis is, you know, ahead yeah. ahead of him. Um, he just kind of thinks, oh, right. I'd, I'd be a good king. But I think in terms of once he actually was on the throne, I do think he would actually be a pretty good king. Um, I mean, he kind of still kind of fits that like King's Landing kind of crowd you know um yeah from what we kind of see like i think he like is definitely somebody that is like kind of met for the small council but i i mean i do think he would actually be a pretty decent king um but i I, i've seen i somebody in the group had mentioned that he would probably just kind of be like robert in the end where he'd kind of just kind of party and drink um but i mean Mm-hmm. Robert actually, be, even though he was kind of partying and drinking, he did have good advisors in the realm. Did have a pretty good, like prosperous time. Although the iron, you know, the 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 crown's bank, not so much. But uh, if you if you were living, yeah. if you were living in, in the realm, everything was pretty good. Right, for sure. And I think a lot of that uh, that that stuff was Lannister manipulation, just trying to. Uh, put the crown in, in further debt, knowing that then Robert can't do anything. You know, he's he's kind of stuck. Mm-hmm. So, but but you're right. I mean, yeah, the 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 realm was at at peace. I think Renly would have been a good king, actually. Uh, I do too, as well. Yeah. I mean, he. I I don't know that he's the. I think he's a good king in uh, times of peace. Mm-hmm. I'll put it like that. I don't know if he would have been a, a great king during uh, times of war. And that's actually what, what Catelyn Tully kind of, uh, you know, reprimands him for. You know, when she goes to seek out, you know, his aid or Stannis' aid, uh, she's trying to figure out how the, how to, you know, get them uh, either to, uh, you know, come to terms with each other and that they all should be working together with her son Rob to, you know, fight the Lannisters. She's sort of like, you're out here just kind of playing at war. All these tourneys and all this sort mm-hmm. of stuff, it's just sort of like, these this won't last for much longer you know this all seems nice and fun but eventually you know shields are going to break uh you know lances are going to splinter and all this you know bloodshed everywhere and are you ready for that he's just he loves the idea of it uh but i don't know that he could actually be a a, a commander you know what i'm saying right he yep. doesn't seem like he now he if he turns it over to um the tyrells you know Loras Tyrell, then, yeah, sure, you're fine, you're good, and, and bringing up Tarth, awesome. But uh, they just seemed to be playing at war there, and she just felt like they weren't ready, or that the men were going to get restless, and that they would sort of catch on that, yeah, this is all kind of, you know, flowers and charades here, and we're really not uh, that committed. We want to we want to play at being king, but, you know, I don't know, I don't know. So that's, He'd been great during uh, once he's there and he's managing stuff and he's you know helping the realm maybe mm-hmm. even better with managing money mm-hmm. that kind of stuff he's he's kind hearted so you know I like I like to I like the idea of it and that's also why he was per, e- so easily persuaded is that he yeah. felt like yeah I'm I am pretty a pretty good guy I think it's okay to say you know self assess yourself and and say uh, self assess yourself and, and you know and uh, realize that you're a good person and that you mm-hmm. would probably do good things for the realm. And then, so he thinks I'm better than Robert. You know, I can't be any worse than Robert. 
you know, and I know Stannis is no good, so it's up to me, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, I agree. That's a good question, though. Yeah, I like 100%. it. Uh, okay, uh, one more here from the group uh, from Daniel Coots. I hope I'm pronouncing that uh, correctly. Which death is? I think it's Coutts. Coutts. Okay. Uh, yep. Which death is the most emotionally devastating to you in the series? If you had to pick one, Eddard Stark is mine. Whew, Sir Ezra. Most devastating death. Oh my gosh, man, that is tough. I really liked Rob. Yeah, like, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm, loved... I'm actually gonna. I'm gonna go with you too, Rob. Really? Was the, okay. It was the one I was gonna say. I uh, and, and, and I think a lot of people would say that because you know that again. What's so devastating about it is that like Eddard Stark is his head's taken. You know, it's taken mm-hmm. off, and in such a terrible way, and it's just so messed up. And, you know, the, you've got this young wolf who is just, I mean, laying waste to the Lannisters, out, you know, outsmarting them mm-hmm. and doing so awesome. He even hooks up with, you know, this like beautiful girl. He's passionately in love with her. You know, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's such a has all those elements of that high fantasy story type of, of thing. And then Kurt just brings it crashing down, you mm-hmm. know, uh, with with the Red Wedding. And it's such a like I liked him. You know, mm-hmm. he, he writes the letter to, to kind of say that he's going to legitimize uh, John. Yeah. You know, he's the king in the north. He could do mm-hmm. that. And yep. so, you know, I mean, if 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 Aegon the Unworthy can le- can legitimize all those bastards, you better believe that Rob Stark can legitimize his own bastard brother. You yep. know, so I don't know that that just struck with me. I, I just, yeah. And I'm going to say, Rob, for me, not necessarily that the whole like Red Wedding business, um, like how it happened, but it was just that. Um, you know, at that time, like I hadn't really read the book, so I didn't really know how it was going to go. And I was just kind of seeing it. And I was like, oh, OK, wow. Like I can see this being like, you know, the, ne- the, the next big thing. Right. It's going to be like Rob take like is going to go like fight Joffrey. And then, you know, like two episodes later, Joffrey's dead. And it's like, whoa, mm-hmm. like Joffrey dies like so early in, you know, the next season or next book. Um, yeah. That I was just like, wow, okay. That was when I really knew that, okay, this, it's all open, uh, you know, <laughs> from, yeah. from here. So, no one's safe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, do, yeah. You, do you have an, go ahead. Do you have an honorable mention, like, like someone who comes in second? Because, because <sighs> Rob is kind of a, yeah. You know, I think, I think that, I think he's, he's probably a lot of people's like Eddard Starks. I think you could kind of see, you could kind of see coming. Um, yeah. In the show, although I still like would like to argue that he's he's not dead, um, but for me, Stannis Baratheon. Okay, okay, yeah. Because um, I really, I just really like Stannis as a character a lot, um, and his his death in the show for me, where it's just kind of like he's just <sighs> Stannis is like somebody who he uh, Stannis actually deserves to be king. He is like by you know the letter of the law. The actual, yeah. the actual king, and when and when he dies, he's ju- he's just like so beaten down and like, you know, he's like lost everything. Yeah. He he like he lost his right. daughter trying to do it. Um, you know, he's just he's just lost like his army to um, Ramsey Bolton, or and so it's just like wow, you know, I don't I don't know I just I don't know what it is about that death, but I was just always like that one really hits me, just kind of yeah. I think I was trying to think of a female character that I really, you know, just hated to see uh, die. Mm-hmm. And so if we're going show, um, well, if we're going show and we're talking female character, I was going to say Rob's wife, but let's let's get past that. So uh, really, if, and again, show Rickon. I, yeah. I, I like that. That was that to me. I was just like, this is. I remember when that Battle of the Bastards stuff was happening, and I was just like, this. What's the point? This right. is madness. Mm-hmm. I remember I was yelling at the screen, like, this is madness. Right. No, you're not going to kill this little kid for just no reason. Like, come on. Yeah. This is crazy. I know, I get that there's there's more to it, but I'm just like, seriously? You know, mm-hmm. so that one. Well, I, I, was... I mean, okay, really. I think if you have to talk about it, if I have to pick the one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Hod- you got to go with Hodor. I mean, it Hodor was, the most, especially yeah. because he's this character who, like, you know, he's just always there and you never really realize how kind of, you know, important he is or, you know, how cool he yeah. is until you get to that scene. And it's just it was like 
like the Red Wedding, like you know, people, <laughs> people cry. right? Like the Red Wedding, like obviously the people who were just watching the show didn't know it was coming, but for us, like book readers, you know, yeah. I mean, and like so, I you know. I don't think it was a satisfying – whereas Hodor, no one had any idea that that's how it was going to go down. And it's not just that Hodor died, um, but it's like Hodor dies saving Bran, and then like you get this whole realization that Bran was actually the one that kind of maybe made him Hodor. And it's just yep. like – it's this – It's it was a shocking moment, and it was like – it's bittersweet, right? Because on one yeah. hand, like Hodor's dying. And on the other hand, you're getting this whole like huge realization. Like when the when the red wedding happens, it's just like it was just sucks because Rob totally played his cards wrong. But the Hodor thing, it's just it's different because on one way it's kind of this good feeling, but it's just, it was crazy. It was just like wow. It was emo- oh, yeah. it was emotionally devastating. Not in that like it was heart. It, it it is kind of heartbreaking, but it's it's just different. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Yeah, that one. That's one we uh, almost for. I mean. How can you forget about Hodor? Right. You know, just wow. Yeah. So now, and now let me let me pose a different question before because I know we got one more little tiny uh, Raven there, and that uh, and mm-hmm. uh, Gus's re- uh, Raven is actually about the Facebook group. So, um, most satisfying death. That's twisted, isn't it? Who most satisfying? You know? Okay, that's good. That's good. Most satisfying. I think everyone. Which one are you like? Ramsey. Yeah, Ramsey Bolton or Ramsey oh, Ram, wow. Ramsey Snow because it's John. It's like John killing him. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I I was way more emotionally satisfied um, with that. And you know, and you and I have talked about it. This is actually kind of our interesting story. Is also it is also like when we watched it, we were watching it live, yeah. and it was the same night that the Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron James won a title yeah. like in Cleveland. We're both from Ohio. Yeah. And so we were kind of like, uh, like we can't like skip game of Thrones, <laughs> but like we knew this was going on. It was like game seven and they were coming back. So like those two things are always kind of going to be like tied together. Right. For me. So I had, a, right. I kind of have that, ha- have that going as well. And Joffrey's wasn't like super emotionally satisfying because like, I didn't know it was going to happen. So it was kind of like, oh, I was actually really shocked when Joffrey died. Um, I get you, yeah. And yeah, so, and so, like Ramsey, Ramsey Snow, we knew happened. Like when John, we almost thought John died when he's like in the. We're like, oh my god, like he's dead, he's dead. We were like, we were like so upset. Yeah, <laughs> we were like, he's dead. This is dumb. Like I can't. Why? Like this can't. Like we were yeah, so man. upset, and so then he came bad. out of it, and we we're like, so oh, sad. thank God. So <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. That's so Ramsey's awesome. Ramsey's was for me. Gotcha. You know, kind of an unexpected one uh, for me, and I'm going just book here, is uh, Lysa. You know, Mm -hmm. like when she gets sort of like, you know, out the moon door. I mean, I guess it's just her treatment of Tyrion and then Sansa, you know, I'm just sort of like she's crazed. She's a little nutso. And I was like, I'm, you know, I'm just done with her. And then the fact I didn't I, I actually didn't really see that one coming i thought maybe something else i thought he would kind of i thought little finger, little finger would keep that going for a little longer um so yeah mm-hmm. that was a little little shocker ruski for me but you know and and you know come somewhat satisfied but you're right ramsey is the that is that's the one you were like please mm-hmm. and again it goes back to sansa i got this thing i love sansa you know sophie turner just amazing mm-hmm. so she's great and everything she's done so far so yeah but all right. Uh, uh, okay, last one here, I believe. You want to take this one, Sir Ezra? Yeah, and yeah, I got you. And so this is uh, Sir Gus, the Honest. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> so we have here. Uh, let's see. Evening, my lords. Noticed the episode dropped while I was working and was able to listen to it uh, when I got off. Been meaning to write in, but it's been busy for me here. Uh, I work for a major toy company, and let me tell you, winter is coming. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. The holidays. <laughs> so, uh, hoping to beat Lord Adam Parker in trivia again. I believe it was me who won last week, and uh, this is this is actually an order, Raven. Uh, and I was cr- and I was uh, crushed. You guys had someone else. Uh, ha ha ha! Just kidding. Okay, so maybe it was last week. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, I was just uh, I, I just wanted to comment on how great the Facebook group is coming along and seeing stuff uh, from not only you guys but other listeners who are constantly uh, mentioned on the show. Keep it up! I'm definitely down for some Discord action. Looking forward to some live discussions. Always listening, Sir Gus. The mm-hmm. honest P.S. Where do whores 
go? Good question. Um, good question. Tyrion's so, asking it all throughout Winds of Winter. The whole time. Or uh, yeah. uh, Dance of Dragons. Excuse or, me. Yeah. Dance, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, first of all, I did, you know, thanks, um, Sir Gus. We really appreciate it. And uh, I think I've finally got Sir Gus and Sir Gibbs figured out. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I just, uh, I really enjoy the Facebook discussion threads and the fact that you guys are you know, leading us through those, just even those simple questions, like, mm-hmm. you know, most satisfying death versus, like, you know, most heart-wrenching death, you know? Like, mm-hmm. that's that's fun stuff to talk about. And it's just an appreciation for the series and then, you know, um, the deeper rabbit holes and the deeper, you know, theories and stuff that we can find. Don't be afraid to find something that's old recycled uh, Reddit stuff, too, because we, we pull up stuff that's been on the Reddit for... Ch- so something on there that was, like ancient man i don't even mm-hmm. know how it was still up there it was just so good that it had been upvoted so many times and it was just still relevant and uh i think it was it was it had to be something with uh, r plus l equals j uh or whatever it was all about john's parentage and so if you find something like that that's still relevant we want to discuss it and talk about it feel free to you know put that in the group um and lead us in those discussions because it is actually i think super cool for us even to see you know, you guys who who write in uh, the ghost of Heron Hall and, and and others, you know, talking to each other in the group. It's just fantastic. And so uh, to see all those minds working together on, you know, kind of uh, dissecting the series is just is fantastic. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, yeah. Huge thank you to you guys. So uh, and the, the the discord action, too. I would uh, I think we t- we talked about possibly doing like a quarterly uh discord hangout slash q and a did we sir matt yeah yeah we yeah we yeah yeah we talked we talk. maybe starting that mm-hmm. come you know before the new year get one in and then possibly do three to four next year yeah and um you know so, yeah something else um i've been i've been thinking about um is you know maybe do it we could do it maybe on youtube do a um you know f- we talked about the, the the discord so you guys can kind of do it live right so we record yep. and you guys can kind of chat but I do, I do think, uh, yeah. If we, um, if we did maybe, sometime a actual follow up Friday live, where we were just, you know, oh like, yeah, like a like yeah. so, but we just do responding to the chat, right? So maybe something something like that where we're just kind of going yeah, off, right? Check. Rather than rather than follow up Friday, where we have our Ravens. So maybe you know not every week, but every every now and then, maybe kind of do a yeah once in, make it a bigger event sort mm-hmm. of thing, yeah. Yeah, and we could do it on. Uh, like YouTube or Discord or whatever, and then you can have that chat room that's kind of open or Twitch or something like that too. So, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Also, real quickly, my apologies to uh, Lord Adam Parker. I just thought of something. I looked in my notes, and I owe him a little research. So I've got to go track down some of my mythology stuff and send that to him. I found some of my notes over here. Notes I take after Fall Off Friday. I just kind of have a doc and I. I, I've been keeping track of follow-up stuff, and there it is. So, uh, Lord Adam, that'll be coming your way soon. So, <laughs> just a quick little add-in. So, but uh, um, yeah, thanks everybody who sent out to uh, you know Ravens this week. I think that was our last one. We do have a couple uh, solid ones that we have saved away. We've got the Ghost of Heron Hall sent us a nice one mm-hmm. uh, just before we started recording, and so uh, we decided to save that so we could take a, a good look at it next week and, and get after it. So. Again, uh, those of you that, uh, that want to send in those ravens, send those to btkcast at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to participate in the Facebook group, we're definitely pulling uh, from that, and we'll be pulling the, the more that's happening in there, and, and, and the better the conversation is, the better the show is. Absolutely. You know, so, um, Absolutely, yep. That's, that's where it's at. So, but. All right. Well, I think that's it, Sir Matt. All right. Well, in the words of House Hornwood, righteous in wrath.